What's up, guys? Welcome to another amazing, amazing episode of the Kiss Capades podcast. I have a very special guest with me today, and I'll just let her introduce herself, what she does, and we can take it off from there. So tell the people your name and what you do. I thought you were going to give me like a blitz. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. Hello, yeah. everybody. My name is Wanjiro Muredi. Mm-hmm. I run a company called Wine Giro. Yes, you guessed it. We deal with wine, but it's not our only products. You know, wine is the medium we choose. And of course, um, when you build a brand, you look for something catchy and hence the name. Uh-huh. So the three pillars that um, our company is based on, one is education. Yeah. The next one is experience uh-huh. and then lifestyle. So people need to experience things and they need to know about them. Mm. So education, I think, is a foundation where we train people. Mm. And of course, we do hospitality training specifically on wine education. So we train people about wine and we both have uh, professional courses that you actually get certification on. Okay. Uh, uh, let's slow down first of all. I can tell that you're about to summarize <laughs> everything. Okay. We have an hour. We have right, an hour. Right. Okay, so super. we will go. We will. I have all the questions. <laughs> I just actually, I just wanted you to introduce yourself. Okay, <laughs> that's it. So I'm so sorry. <laughs> let's start with. I was like, brr, what's going on? Okay. I could, I could tell like within the five minutes, you'd have summarized the whole podcast if I didn't interrupt. So Should let's start. like Twitter bio. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> something. Yeah. Okay. something close to that. So let's start with, how did you come up with the name Wanjiro? Because that's a very unique name. Okay. And I actually, that's one of the things that actually made me interested in following you on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Just because like, okay, who's this? This is a very unique, and even the logo. Yeah. It's unique stuff. It's unique stuff as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thanks. <laughs> I should really be careful what I say. Mm. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Wanjiro, okay, I run. Right, yeah. I I do marathons, and when you're running out there, so that wasn't a joke actually. It, right? w- it was no joke. It was actually I can tell you it was January 2013, mm-hmm. 2014. Yeah. Um, the run was around Runda Mushada area. I mm-hmm. remember I was running with the Urban Sorrows, which is a running club. Every Saturday morning they run, mm-hmm. and I'd been thinking about a company, and of course you think about sexy names like Liquid Arts, Liquid mm-hmm. Gold, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But then I figured, you know, sometimes. Using your name as a base and trying to sort of change things around yeah. is yeah. also really useful. So hence the wine Jiro. And at first it was a joke, but the more we talked about it, I remember uh, the guy who designed the logo is called Job. Mm. And Shout uh, out to Job. Eh? <laughs> Job Ballard of Accent Design. You know? uh-huh. um, and we were having breakfast and I said, yeah, this is the thingy. And yeah, a name called Wine Jiro. And he's like, I like it. I'm going to design your logo. And I'm like, okay, cool. Uh-huh. Like that's so it picks on. And of course some people ask like what does it mean or and you're afraid of say you're working in international circles, people understand it. I'm like, what is Google? Oh, no, people what do you mean? Like what people won't understand it. Yeah, people so you But exp- once you see wine, yes. And then Jiro, come on, that's already just super unique. Super unique. Nice. And yeah. then it gives me a chance to explain, uh-huh. right? A conversation starter. So very much so. Uh-huh. Yeah, and we like that. And yeah. um and sometimes when people forget my name, they actually just call me Wanjiro, which is again okay because it's like close, right? Yeah. Um, but then now, if you think about it now, the more we talked about it, the, the more other deviations started coming out of the name. Mm-hmm. So it could mean black wine because Njiro in Kikuyu is black. Mm. Yeah, but that wasn't oh, even... Oh, yeah. That yeah. was even... That was not even something we had planned. So black wine, I guess, again, the whole issue about diversity in the industry because... Mm. You know, black people getting into wine and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But really, it was about my name. I'm vain like that. Mm -hmm, (laughs) mm -hmm. Um, So then the logo was, but the logo was designed as well. So it's a W, but it's two bunches of grapes. Yep. But it can also be like wines in a cellar. That caught my eye. I was like, okay. Yeah. So there's all she knows what she's doing. So there's all these stories. So I mean, some, some things really were accidental and some things were intentional. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's how we came up with the name. Nice. I was running and had a brainwave. So mm-hmm. people should run more when they're coming up with names. Hey, we're, all, we're all Kenyans. We should all run, first of all. <laughs> some should be running for so many other different reasons. <laughs> but anyway, so um, just... Uh, is because you said when you were running, you came up with this idea. Yeah. Okay. Did you have 
were you do were you in the wine oh, business okay. already no the running was about the name yeah okay. clearly i wish i shouldn't be running if i've drunk right <laughs> yeah, yeah so believe it or not yeah i was a civil servant what yes um I, really? I, I have a degree in business, two degrees in business, but then um, for 10 years I was working in South Africa for the government of South Africa as a head of uh, non-funding programs. Mm. So my daily life um, was used to terminology like sustainable livelihoods, uh, impact. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, we know those terms. Uh-huh. Youth at risk and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So really, if you had told me, what, 10 years ago that this is what I'd be doing, totally, totally different thing. Yeah. Um, and I wasn't, I mean, alcohol and I have had a strange relationship. I'm not really a drinker, to be honest. I'm a kind like that, you know? Really? Give me chai soup, uji. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? I'm sour. Mm-hmm. But then living in South Africa where wine is a commodity, mm. you don't really think about, oh, I'm going to drink today. It's like, you're the doing, The culture you know? there is just... Yes, the culture there is, you know, and then a- access to wine, you know, petrol station. Mm, mm. And it's not like, you know, wines and spirits. It's at the... Little shop at the petrol station. Yeah, the and they have a variety of like they have different. A variety at all prices. Mm. So really, you don't think about it. It's like you're buying juice or eggs or bread yeah. or milk. Yeah. yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So every so often, if you want to have a drink, then you grab a bottle. Mm-hmm. And um, um, my 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 spouse, my ex spouse at the time, was a member of a wine club. I oh, will get to that. Don't <laughs> worry. Yeah. So, so typically speaking, people actually start with really sort of, you know poor entry like entry level wine and then graduate to the big things yeah but given the fact that he was a collector and was a member of a club he was a collector yes at home then we drank good stuff but then why, again why I would you leave a wine collector <laughs> okay so, sorry my apologies <laughs> sorry my apologies maybe i met the one who makes the investment <laughs> decisions <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, sorry. Edit, edit, edit. <laughs> so again, uh-huh. at home, we would have, you know, but then I wasn't really looking at what we were drinking. I just mm. knew it was great. Yeah. And I mean, um, and of course, you develop some favorites. In fact, there's some brands I see now that, of course, take me back and I buy them for nostalgia. Memories, nostal- yeah. I buy them for nostalgia. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was the other thing. Um, so I guess with time, then you develop, you know, this becomes your choice. Because I've tried beer, I've tried whiskey, I've tried vodka. Mm. It's a not, so they're wi- just not for you. Wine and I mostly agreed. because, But then again, you have to drink in moderation like mm. anything else. Um, yeah. So unfortunately, I had a family tragedy that brought me back to Kenya in 2012. Mm-hmm. Um, that meant I left my lucrative job and I was coming to re Calibrate so you come back home, or like leaving completely, yes, say yes, moving yes. back home. Yes, so mm-hmm. I came back home in 2012, um, and um, of course, you come back to source and start rebuilding things. Mm-hmm. Um, so I still had a consulting gig in sort of microfinance for the first year, but then now, uh, the irony is, I definitely also stopped drinking alcohol for like three or four years, yeah. Yeah. It's not like you have those <laughs> nice, nice, different no, no. ama. No, even in South Africa. Yeah. Yes. Um, I actually had a, I, 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 got, I got a daughter in 2011. Mm-hmm. So, of course, prior to the pregnancy, getting pregnant, you're not yeah. drinking, of yeah. course. Yeah? yeah. But then, actually, my reasons for leaving drinking were for something else. But anyway, throughout those four years, I wasn't drinking. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I lost Mudoni. That's why I came home. So, oh. when I talk about recalibrating, it's really, mm. you know, it's like, you don't know everything is black and you have to create something yeah but i was lucky like i said my friend uh, was running a startup uh, that did uh, payday loans sort of before m shuari and tala and branch there was micro mobile and it's still in existence mm-hmm. so i got a gig you know while they were setting up for that and that i think i was really lucky because then you know you're still doing some economic activity yeah and then um then again i started drinking again so at the time i think i think we're very lucky now at the time, I think buying wine in Kenya was close to a tender process. Mm. Why do I say that? It's like you had to shortlist which places have wine. Yeah. And then which places have wine I can afford. It had to be expensive, <laughs> first of all, Very right? Very expensive. Yeah. And then what are the chances of me getting the wine when I go there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, not that I have shortlisted. Because it also this is where scarce I'm going. as well. And again, you know, will I be able to afford it? So, mm-hmm. so it was frustrating. But because I kept going back to South Africa, uh, my brother is still there, so he kind of took over things for me. Mm-hmm. Um, then I would go and bring back my stash. And then, of course, your friends know. 
yeah. that you know you have money brings yeah so we come to your yeah. house and what we do we like clear your stock in one day <laughs> so there's a day I actually got really upset I removed my invoice book I said where we <laughs> I'm telling you where where because yeah, yeah. again you brought this thinking it's going to last for three months so they're like why don't you do this as a business I mean yeah. I'm like who am I not mm. to look for the opportunity mm-hmm. but the idea was I was a consumer mm. so now I had to think uh, I need to be able to s- to talk about why incredibly and of course it's not just about what i like i have to learn a bit more so i started exploring um opportunities for education within south africa with the wine idea, education yes with the idea now of getting a qualification myself and then now becoming an importer for wine so the idea of going to cape town on a regular basis was really good and of mm. course touring the wine lines now but then you're not touring just to go and taste you're touring with the idea in mind yeah so university of cape town the Graduate School of Business, one of the top universities, I think, in Africa, um, mm. uh, had a program that was called, uh, it's a postgraduate diploma in wine business management. Mm. So I signed up for that. And uh, the first day you go to class, you're 11 people and like you're one of two blacks. The other, uh, one of three blacks, because the other one was actually a Kenyan guy, then the other one was a South African guy. Mm-hmm. And then at the beginning of the course, I realized it was more, uh, what can I call it? It was a business course for wine people. Mm-hmm. With two business degrees, I was like, fiddling thumbs, where are we going to get to the wine thing? So <laughs> yeah. for, like in the fourth module, that's when we really got into the wine thing. So that was a bit frustrating. But the other thing is, you can't quit a class if you're the minority. Yeah. And I mean, it was a very long application process, right? You've already it, gotten in there. And it's, it's I mean, it's, Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I stuck it out. But then what I did was to now try and leverage from my classmates and actually find out about this thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So one of my classmates, Francois, was a winemaker in a wine estate called Asara. He was like, come over. And in retrospect, I think it was one of the best wine tours I've ever been given. Mm-hmm. Asara is a beautiful estate in Stellenbosch. He took me into his cellar and was giving me barrel tastings. And he was talking about all these winemaking techniques. I was so green. And I know we spent like three hours there. In fact, I need to go back and do the same thing again. But I didn't really appreciate it. But it was one of those things that I would, it was really, really cool. One thing about the Asara cellar, this mm-hmm. is, I'm digressing, is that yeah. it has chandeliers. So it's, it's a wine just cellar. Just get in there, yeah. It's chandeliers inside. So <laughs> yeah. you can imagine. I, I thought that was all, what all wine cellars looked like. Anyway, yeah. so, you know, Francois gave me that experience. Um, every so often, of course, during assignments, you know, the winemakers would bring wine. So slowly, slowly, then I started understanding the business side of things. Hmm. And I even went for one of the top South African wine auctions through, again, another classmate. And the opportunity that people were buying wine at really high prices yeah. as collectors as well. Mm-hmm. But then uh, coming back now to set up the company in Kenya, what became very clear for me is the process of import, export, logistics, uh, getting the wine tested was something that I wasn't really conversant uh, with yeah. and didn't want to get involved in. But then now because I understood the wine value chain in terms of the business, then I thought, why not education? I had to go to South Africa to pay for this course. Why can't we have the same courses here? Mm-hmm. And also realizing that even with the little research I had tried to do, you know, within the space, then there was opportunity for that. Um, after finishing the UCT course, then I actually discovered the Wines and Spirits Education Trust course, which mm-hmm. answered the hunger that I really which wanted. Which is the W... W-A-C-T. W-A-C-T. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, before W-A-C-T... Um, during my UCT classes, I know I'm going back and forth. No, 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 no. It's okay. It's okay. So in one yeah. of those classes, of mm-hmm. course, now when you finally got to the wine module, um, there was people from the industry coming to give us talks. One of those people was Matu Mbata, who is the Wines of South Africa, uh, Africa Market Manager. And, um, I think I know him. Yeah. Oh, do you? <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole different... When, when shall you introduce him to the people? <laughs> So, yeah. so I asked Matume, hey, you know what, I'm from Kenya, when are you coming to Kenya, mm-hmm. what do you guys do in Africa? So he's like, oh yeah, we go to Angola, we go to Nigeria, Lagos, and Uganda. No offense Kenya to Uganda. Kenya was not in the... Yeah, no offense to Ugandans, but I was like, Uganda. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But anyway, yeah. he had come into Kenya to prospect just before Westgate. So you can understand how oh, sometimes... Oh, it was during that period. Yeah, things work against us. Yeah. So clearly yeah. after Westgate, nobody was like, hey, yeah, let's go to Kenya, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. But there used to be a lady who used to run... Uh, our fine wine show at South and Sun uh-huh. the years prior. 
Mm. So there was something going on in the space. A beat just, you yeah. know. So he tells me, um, and anyway, there was like one wine event or like two wine events. I think even South African Airways and Niederberg used to do a series of winemaker events as well. Mm-hmm. But the idea was, I told him, please, you have to come to Kenya. So he's like, okay, you know what? Um, I'm going to Uganda in October. You come along. Mm-hmm. See what we do. Write me a proposal. So 2014, October, I went to Uganda. So what they did, and I put in this very ambitious proposal to him. And um, it took a while to get a response. But when the response came back, it was... Um, Super positive. We are doing something in Nairobi. What? In, just like uh, that? In 2015. It wasn't just like that. Okay, there yeah, but I'm just saying, yeah, 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 of yeah, course. But, but now within a year, we yeah. held the first Nairobi Wines of South Africa Grand Tasting. Mm. And before that, I had gone to South Africa now to attend the Cape Wine Show, which is a, a show that happens once every three years. And it's like the South African showcase to the world. Overwhelming experience. Mm-hmm. Three days from nine to five, you go to a room like KICC. You know when you're having the construction expo or the yeah, the way you just have happen. like so many stands, I can only imagine. It's like how a it thousand is bottles of wine, and yeah. you're having meetings from nine to five. Sheesh. And everybody is giving you a taste. So spitting is an art in wine. Oh yeah, because for that you actually can't oh, be you, you can't. can't be sipping like everything. And then every evening there yeah. is. A reception of some sort or dinner somewhere yeah. with more wine, unlimited yeah. wine for three days. Uh, My liver has never recovered, I can tell you. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, then September I go for the show. Then I have to come back in November. One, I'm not in this industry. Uh-huh. I'm a newbie. Number two, I have not been living in Kenya for a while. So, my career capital networks, you know are not necessarily very well developed, especially not in this space. Yeah. Um, and you have to put together an event for trade. Yeah. So learning, I guess, you learn things in your jobs anyway. Mm-hmm. So you had to pull in South African Airways. We had to pull in, of course, uh, South African High Commission. So for you to get sort of the corporate networks within that space, then talk to all now food and beverage people and all the importers. The funny thing is, actually, some people thought I was an imposter of some sort and would... I think Matume got one or two inquiries about is this legit? Is, is because it because who is for 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 sure for who sure. is Wanjiro? Yeah, you know, and where I've has she never, come from? We've never heard we've of never heard of her, uh-huh. and then now this. But then the end result is we had a very successful event um, with about two hundred people, and there was twenty wine producers from South Africa who came to exhibit, and that set us off really in a big way, and maybe so big that now the expectations for whatever else we're going to was do actually taken more was very high. Mm. So see, I was still on that importing road. Mm-hmm. So when I went to do the Wines and Spirits Education Trust, I figured this is really what Nairobi needs. So the idea is you get the, you have to get the qualification, then apply for the license, of yeah. course, to come into the country. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's what I got, I got to do now in 2015. And started the process of getting the qualification here. Uh, yeah. And uh, as with any international license, the fees are very high. I can only imagine. <laughs> yeah, the fees are very imagine. high. So the WASA gig was like our first contract, and we've been doing that annually since 2015. Then WSET, um, we actually launched the Kenyan courses last year. Sorry, this is 2019, yes. Yeah. December 2018, so we've done a full year now. And uh, this is a professional course, it's global. So whatever we're teaching in Nairobi is being taught in Hong Kong, in the UK, in South Africa, in it's Brazil. It's a whole one like system. Like if you it's learn one, here, if you learn here, you don't have to same. go to Nini at you They'll start telling you by the way, no, you've no, learned no. this in Kenya. The certificate is legit, the mm-hmm. pin is legit, and hence the price, mm-hmm. yeah? Um, so level one is basically entry level. What is grapes? You do six hours of guided learning in class, you do the exam on the same day, you have your pin. The cost of that all inclusive, meaning your books, the wine, the teaching, conference facilities for a day and the like are twenty five thousand plus VAT which is twenty eight K. Twenty five okay, huh? Twenty five thousand yeah. shillings. Shillings. <laughs> plus sixteen yeah. percent VAT. Twenty five thousand dollars. No no no. So like yeah, <laughs> some two 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 fifty odd dollars. Yeah. Yeah. But then that's the same price you would pay in SA. Perhaps in the oh, UK. So the, even the pricing is actually. So, so yeah. So they try and make exactly. it. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. So Hospitality Competence Center, which is the company that owns the license, is a is a partnership of three companies. I'm the educator as Wine Giro. Um, then we have Diffuse Consulting, 
and Makin, who are two importers who are also in the business as well. Mm -hmm. And of course, for them also, this is really good because it gives them an opportunity to market their products directly to their target market. But then that's the cost. So in essence, um, when the pricing was being set up, we were very clear that we should give you value right at home. Mm. So people still complain about the cost, but you've saved I the tickets. I think it actually, yeah, because you brought it We brought them, it right like, home. Yeah, yeah. I had to go to Cape Town, do the course, mm -hmm. and then wait for a week to do the exam. You know? <laughs> that's cost. That's and the exam was one a hour. A <laughs> uh, what? The exam is a one hour exam, yeah, right? So, so the pricing is, is really crazy. Sometimes I think air about... tickets, accommodation, all those things, you've actually saved a lot of people. You've saved a lot of people like money. So that's the one. Mm -hmm. Level two is a two day. That is uh, 57,500 mm -hmm. plus VAT. So it just comes to over 60. Mm -hmm. uh, 60,000 odd, 64,000 thereabouts. Mm -hmm. um, so we've had classes every month and we typically do one day level one and then the second day level two. Anybody can do these courses. Yeah, you don't anybody. have to be anybody. Like we do not discriminate. Yeah, like you, there's no vetting process. Like hey, there's by no there vetting. You don't there's see no me. prior qualification required, and you can start at either level one or level two straight away. Oh, really? Those two levels you can start at your own. But then, what determines what level? Because when you say level one, somebody thinks, yeah. okay, this is the starting. So no, yeah, it, it is of course. Like I said, very mm. entry level. You're taught what is grapes, what is yeah. wine, basic. The exam is 30 questions. Multiple choice in 45 minutes, the pass mark is 70%. What but happens if you don't pass? You can reset at a fee. But you don't get like this sat, you're not certified, no, you know, you right? Also, you, get, you get certified. Really? Yes, you still get certified, but... So if I fail, why do I, if, and I'm certified, no, why no, do I need to... No, you only get certified when you pass, that's what I mean. You can oh, reset. Yeah, yeah, yes, okay, you, that's what I was asking, you will sorry. Be, you'll be certified... Once you pass. Once you pass, yes. Perfect. Um, level two, you now go to what are the premium grapes around the world and in which areas are those grapes grown, mm. right? Mm -hmm. So, of course, we are in level one, you dealt with six grapes. Now you're dealing with more grapes and you're talking about different areas. So when you talk about France now, we're not just saying, you know, France is one of the premium growing regions. We actually go to Bordeaux and talk about what areas in Bordeaux, yeah, what grapes are grown in Bordeaux. Just shaking my head. It's not like I <laughs> <laughs> Bodo is a place, right? It is a place. Okay, yeah. You <laughs> see, my face is like. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. fine. That, 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 that is why I have a job, oh, right? Yeah. And that is yeah. why we yeah. know we do what we do. Um, uh -huh. So, so it's a bit more detailed. So that we do two days of training because um, it's guided learning is 16 hours in this sense. But then now we give you some time before the exam. So the exam is after five days. Um, it's also multiple choice. Mm -hmm. The pass mark is 55. It's fair, right? Yes. Um, and of course, there you can even get a distinction of the like. I'll be proud to say um, we've had very, very good marks in both. Uh, we've had a, a 100% from a non-industry person. Mm -hmm. oh, wait, level what? One. Yes, someone who is not even in the wine trade. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in the level one. And then level two, we got a 96% from also a non-trade person. Mm. Yeah, so when I say if you're interested in wine, when I first started, I wasn't in the industry myself. I went in. If you told me I would be educating people, I would have laughed as well. Yeah, you um, never saw yourself. I like never saw me. myself that. So WSET has four levels. So I'm a level three, therefore, I'm then I had to do a certification course. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't enough that I had the qualification, I had to go for a train the trainer and be tested on that to get the license to train in Kenya. I want to teach level three. So I did register for level four, but I'll be honest, I have deferred it for some time because... Wait, why is it that uh, crazy? Because I saw... One, the expense is a lot, number one. Oh, yeah. Number two, mm -hmm. there's only... Okay, I, I chose to do it in London, and um, I was trying to be clever to do the... It's not even block release, the intense yeah. course, right? Yeah. And I had factored everything except homework money. Mm -hmm. So let me tell you about homework money. Um, have, you, have you watched the movie Song? No. Any wine lover must watch the SOM series, S O M, uh -huh. which uh -huh. is short for sommelier, which is like a wine expert, right? Yeah. So, the so you know, those are movies that I'm no, no, sure no. wine people would be. No, but was you it like a blockbuster? You would enjoy it. No, it's not a blockbuster. It's like okay. sort of a documentary. But I can go and look. It's a documentary, it. right? If you watch Chernobyl and enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And, and you like wine, don't you? I do love There's wine. There's only one answer for that question. I love wine. I do love wine. <laughs> so the idea is, okay, so some follows uh, people who do an exam called the Master of Wine exam. Mm -hmm. 
And a big part of that exam is tasting. And they taste blindly and have to give information regarding that. Mm. So if you think about tasting at level four, which is at expert level, then of course you will taste in class during the class, but then yeah. for your own sort of training, you need to do your own tasting. And if the tasting of what is expected, the bottles are going for, say, around $50 a bottle, <laughs> homework money needs to be really... <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So anybody who wants to sponsor my wine education <laughs> for two years is welcome. <laughs> for two years? Yes, yeah, so level four is two years long. And, and uh, that you have to do it in London, or that's an option? Okay, so... so London being one of the most... Is it the ex- most expensive city? Exactly, or? exactly. Yeah. So... The, yeah, the, the the way they break down the units, of course, it spreads out over two years. I was uh, trying to be... So that you up, also get time to actually t- absorb time to, the knowledge. To absorb the knowledge. And then a lot of the exams at that level are case studies and mm, essays, mm, yeah? Mm. Where the multiple choice in level one and two, okay. level three um, gets you into some short answer questions. So mm. you'll be given sort of something for 20 marks, something for 20 marks. Now, level four is 100 marks. <laughs> Yep. Write the essay, some are yeah. open book um, assignments, some are like that. So there's, there's a lot of reading to do. And I'm guessing after you're done, with some, that's what you're planning to do now. Yes, so I'm, I'm, I'm still a student, but then yeah. I've deferred the classes until I figure out the work. The, the thing is, again, I have obligations to teach in Nairobi, so I don't want to be away from Because you're the person that people yes. come to I'm now the certified for. educator. In the, Nairobi. Uh, yeah, under the Hospitality Competence Center. So you can't just up and go. Decide that today I'm going yeah. to... For then, two years, especially. I'm, yeah. I'm but, then, but then what I'm, tra- what I'm challenging my students is, yeah. you guys go on, do level three, yeah. and you'll be able to teach. Then I can yeah. graduate to finer things. Mm-hmm. So Wines and Spirits Education Trust, actually, um, next year, the people from the headquarters are going to come into the country and hopefully we'll do uh, the, a week around March. Mm-hmm. You know, promoting wine education in general, um, because and you know, if you ever need like you know, <laughs> people to <laughs> people to help with content creation, content creation and recording the experience, we know who to go to, John. Yeah, you're yeah. the man. Yeah, you know, yeah. very so, reliable, right? Yeah, very reliable. Yeah, yeah. Money come away, way when you let me say. Oh no. Uh huh. Yeah. So they'll so, be in the country. Yes. So the thing is, is we're not saying everybody has to do W set. The reality is, hmm. the education begins from even you in the supermarket looking at a bottle of wine. Yeah. Um, you want to know the you want information to know, about... You ask, you ask the attendant, Nini Nini, he advises you. There's lots of blogs um, like that and, and groups coming up. Um, there's lots of wine bars in Nairobi now. Yeah. Importers have also done an extremely, extremely great job over the years mm-hmm. because they had to sell their wine. So for you to get a listing, you had mm. to go and, of course, train the staff, say, at Art Cafe, yeah. you know, at Madison Blue, at whatever place, so to they be able really to get listed. Yeah. Mm. But then, you know, that's brand training. So I'm teaching you about my wines, not necessarily doing general wine education, mm. right? Um, oh, about the wines that you yes, bring so, in the country, right? So I'm teaching you what you need to sell. Ah, an yeah. Importer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah? And of course, it's in my best... If you're serving somebody, you're supposed to... Yeah, so it's my best instrument for you to represent my brands properly. So those people who just come and open a bottle of wine, wine I've ordered, and they don't explain no, anything. No, they're doing an injustice because there's such an opportunity to take you somewhere. And honestly, sometimes I'm so fickle. Yeah. I like the wine label and say something like Companion, mm-hmm. and I'm having dinner with a significant so, other. Yeah. I'm going to buy that wine called Companion as opposed to yeah. something with a, a name like, um, I don't know, Epicurean or something, you know? There's, there's stuff like that. Um, but you would generally want somebody who comes and actually it. tells you by the this, or would you like to try our uh, this yes, and this try and this because it this has and, and, and give you options. Yeah, yeah? And, yeah. And, and even if I decide I'm still buying the cheapest, yeah, you have you have educated me mm. somewhat. You've pushed mm. me out of my comfort mm. zone. So importers have been very very great in that regard, and of course, um, a lot of them send their send their clients as well as their own people to our WZ courses. Mm -hmm. Now, what Wines of South Africa also did over and above doing the big grand tasting event was they are very, very keen on educating the trade and media on South African wines. So every time we have the grand tasting, we always have a day of training specifically on specifically South African wines. Mm. So we narrow in on that country and, and talk about the different regions of the South Africa and people get a chance to taste that as well. Yeah. And 
And uh, at this time, I think South African wines are still the most volume in um, in Nairobi. <coughs> Mm-hmm. So it's not like I'm punting my clients, which of course I am, <laughs> but also, I mean, yeah. it's easier. And of course, most people will technically go to, say, Leleshwa for mm-hmm. an opportunity to visit a vineyard, vineyard mm-hmm. and then when they leave the country, then they would go to South Africa. Yeah, come closer yeah. to the mic. So, <laughs> over and above that, okay, yeah. are we together Yeah, we're good now, <laughs> we're good, yeah. Over and above that, for two years, in uh, 2016 and 2019, we also held a competition. Mm. For sommeliers, yeah, remember they want some S O M M. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. if you can't say sommelier, you can say some. You still some sound is easier because yeah. at times I think people, especially yeah. newbies, are like, oh, <laughs> yeah, they're a bit hesitant on pro- the pronunciation. There's some media interviews that have been done when people say Somalia. <laughs> if that makes you remember, it's fine. Oh, yeah, but the word yeah. is sommelier. Sommelier. Uh-huh. Yeah, so a wine expert. Mm-hmm. So and there's opportunities for this this competitions a lot. So the Wines of South Africa Sommelier Competition has been held twice. Mm-hmm. Both times have been won by men. Um, um, I wonder why. <laughs> but no, the funny thing Does is this though. This just mean that men the top are three better. No, the top it three. It doesn't. There's always been two women and a guy, and then the <laughs> guy wins. <laughs> okay. Yeah, maybe we should do a women one only. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> anyway. Wow. But then what we do is there's a theory session mm-hmm. because theory is important. You need to know the knowledge. Yeah. So you're asked about different regions in South Africa. You're asked about personalities in wine in South Africa. You're asked about uh, brands, right? Um, so there's a theory exam. Then from that, the top 10 then get to do a tasting exam. So the blind tasting I was talking about, we have three glasses here. Mm-hmm. And we ask you to taste and you're supposed to define the grape. Talk about it. The year or the contents. Even even the vintage. The year is the vintage, mm. yes. So these are your three girls. Describe them. <laughs> Describe, yeah. And then from that, then, the top three do a service competition. Mm-hmm. So we, we do a mock restaurant scenario, right? And then, of course, they've been given a brief with a menu and a wine list. Mm-hmm. So, and of course, the glasses and sort of corkscrews. So they have all the materials. And the idea is they have to receive the guests, engage them, and recommend them. And of course, there'll be asked specific questions about the wine. So because by we've given you a wine list, yeah, by, 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 by a pan- guests? Yeah, panel of judges who are the guests. Ah. It's, yeah, the judges are now the, the restaurant, the, the guests at the hotel. Mm-hmm. At this, uh, okay. So, Navraki. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Should I ask my question? No, no, I don't want to interrupt no, you. No, no, no. Please, okay. please so don't stop me. Ideally, no, 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 no. I just go I, on. And ideally, I have to have to sip my. Sip your tea at least, eh? So now, if you go typically in a restaurant, because yeah. now I'm asking like an outsider, right? Sure. Forget about the judges and everything. Yeah. Typically, as uh, just like a regular consumer who's gone to a restaurant. Yeah. If you're being served wine. Yes. What's the process or procedure that you should be you should expect? Yes. From the person who's actually serving you wine. Okay. So that yes. those people who serve me wine, the way they serve me, <laughs> this is for you. Uh huh. This is where I say come to class and yes. we'll teach you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, just general overview. Yeah. yeah? Um. Because like now, like people I, who are listening to this, true. they definitely now have people who are definitely outside that yeah. industry, yes. and they'd be like, "Oh, I didn't know that's I didn't how know that's it's how it's supposed to be." Yeah. Okay. One, of course, there's a very. I, I feel people need to personalize the experience. I don't mm-hmm. want to be like regimental, right? Yeah. The reason why you go to a particular doctor or a particular hair stylist yeah. is because of the service you receive. So, of True. course, there's the personal experience that, of course, every person brings up. Mm-hmm. But typically speaking, let me use the analogy of I have a matchmaking you. So you're a guy and I want to introduce you to three of my closest friends. Please do. And then leave the decision to you. Mm-hmm. So what would I do? I would want to tell you about them. So I'll give you a menu and say this is what we have on the menu. Um, this typically by glass options and by bottle by options. By bottle options, yeah. Yes. So, um, so I would ask, say, I want to know what time of day is it, right? Um, if it's lunch or supper, mm-hmm. what kind of weather is it, for example? Those are considerations for me. So, not necessarily saying those are the. Yeah. I need to know, but, right? Yeah. To mm-hmm. give you the options. What are you having to eat? Are you mm. alone with someone? Is it an occasion? So, I think. The easiest people to sell to are people on a date. If it's a couple, geez, you can yeah. make so much money or recommend. Really? Yeah, because then you can upsell, right? Yeah. Anyway, so once I've told you what wines we have on, 
and um, some people know them or directly, then I should be able to describe a bit more because yeah. again, perhaps there's a promotion we're doing mm. or there's wines we are pushing. Yeah, you know, there's some bottles process, that, yeah, 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 true, true. And, and even the whole McDonald's thing, why do they always ask whether you want fries with that or whether you want to upsize your order? It's yeah. because there's an upselling to it. So of course, if you're, if you're drinking by the glass, then sure, serve what you need to serve. A lot of people in Nairobi don't show you the bottle if they serve you by the glass. I think that's a disservice because it's a learning opportunity if I bring, even though I'm serving you by the glass, if I bring that to you. But of course... Just bring the glass. Sorry, yeah, they just bring it already served, mm-hmm. yeah? You hear but, that? but I understand there's mm-hmm. some logistical issues. Oh. Because most restaurants have... So I shouldn't. <laughs> I should put my finger down. I'm saying ideally. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And even if I do that, if I request the bottle, I should be shown the bottle. Even yeah. if they have served behind the counter, because control sometimes suggests that the waiter, the barman is the one who serves. So he's mm-hmm. measuring and he's like custodian. Yeah. So perhaps that's why bringing the bottle to serve you on the table is not always viable. But in the very least, I should bring you the bottle for you to see. Or I should be able to describe have, it. Yeah in a way that you don't have to say the bottle, right? I know so many places. You know. I won't say the names right now. <laughs> yeah. So, again, it depends. Yeah. Yeah. And then... But you see, you now, may, if you, you don't know... If you don't know, yes. Yeah, you'll just so, be like, so okay. Fr- so, perhaps a big brand, the big brand names should be able to serve you at the table. Yeah. Yeah. If it's more like a lounge or a... You know, you may be asking too much to ask Yeah, because like, yeah. even if it's a club, you know, they don't really have time exactly, to Exactly, to do that. So, context yeah. also matters. But yeah. ideally... I should be able to, one, describe what we have on offer, give you some information to help you decide, then yeah. serve you accordingly at the right temperature, in the right glassware, and refill you as necessary. Glassware? Yes. What I always say is, never sell alcohol to anybody without offering them water. Really? Yeah. In or fact, like I advise waiters not to ask. I ask you still or partly. You oh, really? I'm selling you alcohol. Oh, yeah, just hi- hydrate, keep hydrate. Really? Yeah, to, to, uh, to give you I've, a space I've never well. been asked that. I've it's never been asked that. It's prudent to do that as yeah. well. Uh-huh. Yes, and of course, um, you know, there's, well, there's, the importance there's, is there's like you have stuff, to. Yeah, there's technical stuff about how you serve and all that stuff, but that's. See, yeah. I need people to come to class. Oh, and yeah, yeah. Something. Oh, yeah, we can't give it all away, yeah, guys. So you have, to, you have to yeah. understand so, that. So, like I said, it's a matchmaking process. Yeah. And I'm supposed to paint the picture to make you, you know, mm. the, the best choice. Mm-hmm. But again, like some people know what they want. You ask for it. If someone asks for ice in their wine and you know you're not supposed to serve that, you also t- context matters. Yeah. Yeah. So you just give them ice cubes. Yeah. The one thing I want to emphasize though. I actually saw. Yes. Since you've mentioned that. that yeah. No, yeah, like one of the most expensive wine what? What was it called? I'll send you that video link. Okay, okay. One of the most expensive thing, it's in New York, a wine collector or something. Yeah. He was saying different ways of consuming the wine, mm. and there's one of them where he was putting actually ice cubes it in the is. wine. And I was just like, ah, okay, I, I don't know. Uh, he has like a wine cellar and everything. Who am I to judge? And then they also had like this big thing that looks like a, 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 jug. a teapot. Okay, that's a decanter. And then it's called a decanter. Yeah, the one and that then makes the wine go round in circle or something. No, uh. this one was just like another different way of consuming. Like you just open your mouth <laughs> and then he lifts it all the way up. I swear I'm not making this up. I'll send that to you. Please link it to me. Maybe well. it's just those guys who come up with different crazy ways of consuming and they just sell the experience. And again, it's, like, it's really about the experience. Really, And right? I mean, I've had some gigs where, yeah. I, okay, where I play the client. I never typically see service, I mean, um, clients, yeah. consumers, yeah. because my consumers are students. Yeah. But every so often I get gigs where I have to step in and be a waiter and do pouring. And I can tell you I respect guys a lot. Why? <laughs> because you get all sorts of requests. And, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you get all sorts of requests and really you have to... Customer service is about giving the customer their best experience. Yeah. So sometimes you have to sort of suck it in. And just deal with... And, and deal that. But I'm saying, when I started, I told you wine was like a tender process. Yeah. But now, mm-hmm. it's grown. I mean, now there are so many wine events, I even have to say, hey, no, I'll only go for one this week, you know? There's mm-hmm. a Nairobi Wine Festival. Yeah. There's um, tastings, there's winemakers coming into the country. And there's a lot of diverse wine importers. We have New Zealand wine, we have Chilean wine, we have Greek wines, mm-hmm. we have all sorts. So in a span of five or so years, yeah. you know, it has expanded so well. And 
I believe there's still room for people to make money out of, say, even wine writing. Mm, okay, now. You know, or like, you know, sort of other niche experiences, right? Yeah, that's why uh, my question would be, since you've mentioned yes. that, before I forget, just my mind, because at times when I just have that question, I have to ask it. No, 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 it's all right. Stop me so I can uh, sip some more. <laughs> <laughs> um, if somebody takes this course, what are like some of the professions like they can actually slide okay. into yeah uh, apart from like maybe just the ones that we already know like you know being in the hotel industry yes what other profession do you think they can okay. apart from the new millennial era when somebody can just come up with yeah something so, and okay so if we say this the, the value chain say this production mm -hmm. Which is, you know, the shamba, the viticulture, and then the wine making, the viniculture. Mm -hmm. And then now there's the commercial aspect, which is the whole importing trade, mm -hmm. labels, bottles, mm -hmm. all that stuff. Um, and then now there's the trade hospitality stuff. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of the jobs in Kenya are very on the commercial side. So mm -hmm. people are importers, people are retailers, people are waiters and sommeliers in hotels. Yeah. On the production end, for example, there's Lele Show, that's sort of the biggest example that I can mm. say that. But then winemaking is a profession. And yep. even Eman Derito, the winemaker at Lele Shua, mm -hmm. is a biochem graduate, if I'm not wrong. Mm. Yeah, she hasn't come to the WSET class yet. Emma, we're waiting for you. She hasn't come to the <laughs> podcast yet. Emma, we're also waiting for you. <laughs> yeah, but I've met her as yes, well. Yes, you see. So, I mean, again, great example. So, I mean, she has 10 vintages to her name. Like, she's wow. been making now this for 10 years. She's, so, doing it, she's been doing it for 10 yes, years? Yes, yes. Although initially, I guess, there was a different arrangement. But now, you know, all vintages are proper, yeah. proper under her. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, they, they've invested in, of course, the company has invested in her education across the board within, mm -hmm. you know, within that production space. Yeah. Um, within Leleshua, they do their tours now. So I know there's someone who's like has to do the wine education. There's of course the viticultural guy who does the shamba. When do we plant? When do we irrigate? When do we prune? Which is a lot of what work that needs proper yes, attention. What yeah. are these pesticides? Whatever, whatever, right? The winemaking is now the magic happens. Like, let's call it the kitchen. Yeah. Because you assume everything went great on the vineyard. Mm -hmm. Then there's people who have to make the wine. Yeah? Um, yeah, and we need more winemakers. There's a young girl called Mukami um, who is trying out something in Kajiado, right? I think, I think I've, was she at your her. event? Probably, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and she was also one of the participants in the Somalia competition. Mm. Um, so bold, <laughs> yeah, yeah, bold, right? But of course, you know, we need more of those, and yeah. I know there's like altar wine made. In different places. Well, of that's course, how the industry would grow anyway. So production, right. we, we haven't even touched the surface. Mm -hmm. And of course, the typical thing of wine doesn't do well in Kenya, we've broken that myth completely. Yeah, you know? because people really do know people their, really their know. stuff right and, now. And once you do the soil testing and whatever, then you'll be able to do that. I've, yeah? I mean, I've attended a couple of those sessions. I yeah. don't even remember the grapes though. Who, who are those people who teach you? I don't say you? the names because that <laughs> they are my friends. I can't. You need to come to WZ class. I will. Once I'm done with you. <laughs> but how long did you, know, you, you say? It's a one day and two day. Okay. Easy, yeah. easy. Maybe there are some little things that I need to just put to in just my put, yeah. yeah. And I mean YouTube videos, there's channels, yeah. there's books. And I think at times it's just personal interest. Personal interest yeah. as well. Yeah. And I mean, how many times do I also go into, even during class, mm -hmm. and so a question is that and I'm like, I've never actually considered that. So constant learning. Yeah. yeah constant yeah. learning. But the irony is, coming on the production side, I grew up in coffee and tea mm. area. Mm -hmm. There's so many similarities, you know, between wine and this too. And I was never interested. Never. And then never now interested. it makes so much sense because you're like, now this brings back all the memories. You and see, now, and now the irony is I'm applying the wine knowledge to understand the tea and coffee now. Because <laughs> it's really the same, yeah. you know. And I'm thinking it would have been so much easier and cheaper if I just became a coffee specialist. Kitambo, yeah, yeah. it would have saved a lot of us a lot of trouble. Uh -huh. But you see, that's the thing. It's full circle, mm. right? Mm. And now I go and appreciate when I'm working on the tea farm. Yeah. You know, okay, hours you can walk around, you don't need a horse. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, it's yeah. over here, yeah. it's finished. <laughs> the coffee is over here, it's finished. Uh -huh. Or even in shards, you appreciate it so much more. Um, mm -hmm. On the commercial side, like I said, there's all those opportunities, but I think, for example, journalism. Yeah. 
is a big thing. And I'm not necessarily blogging, blogging, because even... Like an article or a space on a magazine and... There's, there's awards for best wine writer that are global. The same way there's awards for sommeliers. Do we have those in Kenya? Okay, so I think Some the Some that, you know, maybe you know okay, you've trained. I think, I think Jean Wandimi of the Food and Wine... The Wine and Food Review, or is it the Food and Wine Review? Mm-hmm. Um, is somebody who was sort of niche in that space. There's a lot of lifestyle people who write about wine. Yeah. And I think... Um, media houses like Yummy, of course. Yeah, you can't talk about sure. food necessarily without talking about wine. Yeah. But I'm just saying, there's the review of the wine and tasting, but there's a the business aspect. And this is even a challenge to myself. Mm. We had uh, started running some sessions we were calling the business of food and wine. So the difference between that and a normal tasting or a wine festival is we are talking about what makes, say, Uva Wines as a company that imports Portuguese wine or in, and domain Kenya different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what, is it a, their philosophy or is it just about country? Yeah. Or there are these two South African wine importers. What's their business model and why are they different? And you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. what what can be learned for say future business? Wine retailers. There's mega wines in here at Galeria, but there's places like uh, is it Wine and Bubbles in Riverside? And, um, there's, and there's Kafur that has a wine section. Yeah, I only know about um, <laughs> what's the. The new place in Westlands, the wine shop. Oh yeah, the wine shop. Has the a, wine you shop. only know about the wine shop. Anyway. Imagine, and yeah, because yeah. so I don't know about the the other places. Yeah. So all this, where, okay, just think about where you can buy wine and mm. what makes all these places different. Yeah. And yet, there's so many. Let me call them wine and spirits shops in yeah. the corner. They're true, like Javas. True. They're everywhere. True, true. So again, the business model. A restaurant like Sierra only stocks South African wine. Only. Oh. Uh, do they lose customers because of that? Nope. Or do they attract customers? Or yeah. how are they able to convert, say, non-South African wine drinkers... To actually just come there By for that. saying, oh, you actually want something from Bordeaux. Remember the place I mentioned yeah. before from oh, France? France? Yeah. So like a Bordeaux blend is uh, a wine that's made from Cabernet Sauvignon, Malo, and some other grapes. But it's predominantly those two. Mm-hmm. If I can serve you the same from Stellenbosch... Stellenbosch is... Is it a place in South Africa. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, no, so... Okay. So when you come and say, no, I only drink French wine from Bordeaux, Mm -hmm. I should be able to convince you Mm -hmm. to take something that's similar. Mm -hmm. I'll say this is a similar Bordeaux-style blend, right? If you want something from Burgundy, a place in France, which is typically mm -hmm. serves Pinot Noir grapes and Chardonnay grapes, I should be able to tell you, well, in South Africa, you know, in Walker Bay, they also have really good Mm -hmm. Chardonnays and Pinot Noir, so that kind of scenario. But then they made a business decision and they've stuck to it. There's Italian restaurants like Le Terraza, of course, that only have yeah. Italian wines, mm-hmm. right? So what, what informs those decisions and does it make sense, right? Um, when you talk about a restaurant, for example, you want to be able to know whether their drinks business, how their drinks business contributes to their food business. But even mm. in the drinks business, I want to and, know and what, what is the wine. In is, what way? Yeah. Is wh- are you selling more wine, for example? Yeah. But again, if you, if you come back to the Sierra example, what did we know Sierra for before? Beer. Burger, beer. Beer. Yeah. 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 It was yeah. their beers, right? Yeah, actually true. Their beer and the burgers, those are the two those main things. Those are the two main things. Yeah. But now they're becoming a wine destination. You know, mm. like, you know, how, how what has changed, what is changing? Mm. I still sort of look forward to Nairobi having a, a real, real wine bar. And I guess maybe... Why well, it's just wine? Session. Che, Sonia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what you wanted to say? <laughs> I was like, that's a new word for me, so... <laughs> let me shut that, up. That place in Peponi Road. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. I think, I mean, it's only wine that's sold there. Yeah. Yeah, and uh-huh. they have, I think, a lot of options by the glass, for example. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah... They don't really, they're not really a food rest, they're not really food food, I d- yeah. you know, but then they have a, a very huge wine selection. How is that working? They don't yeah. even open all days of the week. I think they only yeah. open from Thursday Specific to Sunday. Specific days, yeah. Yes. But then, is that the typical Nairobi wine bar? Is that it? There's a place so you should have more. I'm Basically. saying, yeah, so the, the, the imagines of those places where mm. we are not going to a place because of the music or the DJ or yeah. the food, it's because of the wine. Specifically because of yeah. the wine. The, oist, the champagne bar, oyster bar uh, in village markets, mm. I think has the what? Biggest selection of champagne available, I think, mm. anyway, in Nairobi. Um, and again, it's in a food court. 
you know what I mean? It's not, yeah, it's so not it's quite still, a, it's still not like you yeah, know. Yeah, it's not it's not really a restaurant restaurant. It's yeah. it's, it's part of the food courts, but it's a champagne bar. Mm. Is is a champagne premium product? Yes, yeah. and it's being sold off food court shelf. You know? Yeah. Business models. So. I'm excited about that aspect now, and hopefully um, we will resume the the business of food and wine, and maybe even have a business of food and wine conference, where we talk about the decisions around food and wine experiences. Let me say food and drinks. Let me not mm-hmm. limit myself to wine, but of course we know I like wine. Mm-hmm. But understanding that and being able to get data, where I can tell you, you know, uh, give more. Give more specific market information to prospective people getting into the business. Mm-hmm. The, the 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 requests we get from people wanting to become importers, uh, people wanting to have their own wine brands. Oh yeah, Mia Wines, which has somebody can do that. So Just Mara, you know Mara, the bottle that has a Masai. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Which which. When I first came into Kenya, actually, I bought the bottle and took it to my brother and told him, Kenyan wine. Then we turned the bottle, and so it was from South Africa. Uh, so I always make that joke. But Mara, okay, yeah. it's a private label. So it's a Kenyan brand mm-hmm. that is, of course, at this time uh, getting It's not Kenyan made? No, it's a South African. They, they, they get their wine from South Africa. So private labeling is a big thing. Um, so that's a thing as well? Yes. Oh, the same okay. way you have water written uh, Oh yeah, like oh yeah. Happy okay. birthday, John. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> Happy no, I anniversary, get you. John. And oh, I didn't know that. That's so, actually so you can, so you can talk label. to a company. Yes. And tell them like you know this, but how does that work? Like you say, I'm going to promote it. No, uh, no, no. You buy X. Remember? Oh, you just buy X. The same way they, they do with label, water. So and then now it's you. We know the executive water bottle, right? Yeah. So we go and buy, and we have it branded Wine Juro. Oh, that's it. You see, you so sell. No, I, okay, but then again, the private labeling, these levels. Sometimes you just buy and bottle, mm-hmm. but you can also be involved in the growing process. It's okay. like you're sourcing the farm, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. as guys in Shads, we don't make our own coffee. We sell it to a collector, producer, it, mm. who then brands it whatever they brand it. I'm glad counties are getting into the point where now there is, I think, the factory near my Shads is called Monunga Tea Factory. I can actually buy Monunga tea now, branded Monunga, you can go as on opposed actually. to Ketepa. Yeah. You know, because yeah. Ketepa was the bigger Was brand. buying like all there. Yes, and I can get like uh, Kangeta Tea Factory purple tea. Mm. Yeah. Like it's, even it's the still, small scale not, people can still, yes, yeah. It's still not mine, but at least it's closer to home. Yeah, yeah, true. Uh, maybe true. somewhere there there's yeah. our coffee and tea. Yeah. So the same thing about wine, you can mm-hmm. brand. Mm-hmm. Carnivo had a steak master brand. It's so a tamarind group. Yeah. I'm not sure whether they still have it, but then that's again their rest, their group commissioned wine. I think that was from Chile, if I'm not wrong, or mm-hmm. Argentina. Yeah, <laughs> and they, you know, they branded it, yeah. you know, accordingly. Mm-hmm. So you could control production all the way from the start, or you could also just, yeah. And a lot of the wine brands we have in Kenya, from whatever places, they're not all from an estate. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. There's different, yeah. So there isn't international brands that are for different markets that are just packaged for that. But Mara, again, good example of being involved. They do import brands, but they have their own brand as well. And I think the other day they won the most, the best, the preferred wine in Kenya or something. Those really? Summer yeah, they did win that. But just think about that. Is there any hotel in Masai Mara that should not have Mara wine as... By the way, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah? It wouldn't even be fair. KQ it should be selling it. It should be available, duty-free. It should be the one thing we all give our international friends. And is it? No, but I'm just saying because I'm just asking, is it there? Is it has it, have you ever tasted it? Actually, you have. I have a complaint because when I'm being served <laughs> wine at the plane, do they show? Oh, they do show me the bottles. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And sometimes yeah, you, get, sing, you get you get the small you get the small bottles. Yeah, 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 you get the small. But I'm saying, what an opportunity! It would be amazing. You know? I'm I think sure, even I'm sure for maybe somebody in the, coming in exactly, the country, they'd yeah. be like. Their mind would be blown because Maasai's are like exactly. an actual and, signature. And, and, and also they actually so. have a, 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 a CSI project about the beads and the women. Oh, yeah. man, that would be nice. For the 50th anniversary of Kenya's, uh, uh, Kenya's independence, they did a sparkling wine bottle. Yeah? Yeah. Which is, yeah. So it's from South Africa. We can't call it champagne. So it's mm-hmm. Method Cap Classic and then MCC. Mm-hmm. And they had that, again, huge opportunity for at that time 
yeah. and maybe even for a collective item. Well, you well. know, in Kenya, things don't re- necessarily yes, but I'm just saying go out. There are these opportunities, right? There are these opportunities. Yeah. I wish there is a bar, someone would come up with a concept that has a chain of wine bars or wine experiences that you know can be as. Yeah. As common as that cafe or Java, like in every corner. But, you know, you're complaining about wine. You remember, you know, this was a whole controversial thing. We won't say which date because, yeah. you know, we're in 2020 <laughs> right now. We're in 2020 right now. But yeah, we're just talking about opportunities. But, you know, at times things are not like, uh, they have to be. They have to be. It's a, an approval process to, through so to many people. Exactly. But and I think that would be a nice, brilliant idea, but it has to go through. It has to go through something. We could people who are open-minded. We could start our wine channel. Let's do it. Hey, listen. <laughs> listen. Wine I'm, magazine. I'm, I'm not the best on like, the, the business side, but I guarantee you the production quality and everything. Yeah, let's just split the duties and do this. Yeah, when I get the sponsorship for that course for two years and yeah. I'm living like in France, then you'll just come and follow me around and <laughs> we can broadcast. We have listen, show. Listen. We can broadcast our channel. Listen. Be- you better know that I'm very. S- I take everything oh. very seriously. So do I. Okay. So yeah. do I. <laughs> hey, let's you do witnessed this. it right here. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, I mm-hmm. lost my. Where was I? Okay, now. Well, we're talking me about France. We're talking about how I'll be shooting in France, <laughs> and we'll create this amazing content. <laughs> no, we were talking about how uh, the, the, opportunities the opportunities that for can work, be created. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So again, education. You know, the professional courses and others, mm-hmm. you know, experiences. And then, yeah, like I think they saw, there may be others I've missed, but let's move away from the commercial. Let's do the yeah. production side. Okay. And, you know, communication and that. And then there's a the supporting industry. Packaging, for example, is a big deal. Um, yes, and I know we've moved from boxes mm-hmm. to bottles, but we may need to move back to boxes. Again, even for premium wine, there is... Um, Issues around cans, canned wine. That's Ish- an opportunity. Yeah. I mean, canned wine. Imagine. Yeah, why not? Blankets and wine or yeah. Koroga and. And you go with like your two own in Because at right? times you don't necessarily have to carry a glass, glass, a first glass, of all. Glass, exactly. Yeah, depending on the different places that you're going. That you're going. Going camping, necessarily. You don't all necessarily stuff, need, you don't need a need bottle. And, and honestly speaking, a can is a really good packaging yes. vessel, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and of course, there's still people who are stuck in the traditional ways, but we have to keep moving. Apps. Vivino is a wine app used around the world. Yeah. You see? You know, uh, so I actually didn't know about that app until recently. Good for you. It's never too late. I was just like, so I can actually just scan a bottle. Yes. And act like I know and, about. And, and, and get to hear what other people say. What about other people it. are saying about the mm. wine? I didn't know that. So, like, what if we had now a localized uh, version of that that tells you if I want to buy Leleshwa, uh winemakers reserve that's only come out this year? Mm. There's only these places I can get it mm. for this price. Stuff like that. Uh, on the, on the so distribution sense, yeah. side, actually, I like the online space. Mm-hmm. Um, Jumuya is doing, and there's all sorts of drink delivery. This, um, but also um, a portal like um, Wine Cellar, two five four Wine Cellar, owned by you know um, a counterpart in the space, uh, Victoria. Mm-hmm. There is Green Spoon, which is a lifestyle sort of um, blog and shop as well she does curates wines and she sells food and sort of thing that sort of thing. so there's, there's there's all these niche opportunities coming up and people are making money from them you know um there's not even in, even the drink space other than the wine festival there's the beer festival there's the cocktail yeah. festival Sijui, mm. Sijui they are quite a lot they are quite a lot so people have you have space. The, the opportunities are endless. The Let's just say that, right? Very endless. Yeah. So I, I look forward to exporting sommeliers from Kenya to other countries, because <laughs> those who have come through our course. Yeah. I look forward to more winemakers. Mm-hmm. Um, in South Africa, the top ten restaurants in Cape Town have Zimbabwean sommeliers. Really? Zimbabwean sommeliers. Why? I two, mean, two. guys from Zimbabwe. Uh, a well vast in the knowledge no, of this wine people, or this people peop- these people immigrated got into a space and went with it mm. yeah amazing people um, there's two of them actually friends of mine who have their own wine brands 
What? Yes. In Cape Town? Uh, in, yeah, in Cape Town. But of course, I mean, their the wines are available worldwide. There's yeah, uh, Tinashe who has Kubusha wines, and then uh, Dafana has um, Uwe Mosi wines. He also has a gin. That's, that's Right? So this yeah. whole thing about private labeling. Yeah. And, you know, denying yourself the opportunity because you think you're not from a wine growing no, area. Yeah, yeah. You know, these guys, remarkable stories. Or necessarily the, all the resources. All the resources. The I, I mean, a lot of them started as a waiter and, you know, sort of moved up into that uh, space and now, you know, world renowned people. Yeah. So. Well, we all know one thing for sure <laughs> from what you've said. If you want to be good at that, you have to move to a different country. Not necessarily. <laughs> I did move back. Um, yeah, Never, so, yeah. And you can make the opportunities right here. So No, yeah. Yeah. Because we're talking about that, yeah. The yeah. opportunities like that you can actually because they are also untapped. Untapped, yes. They're untapped, yeah. yeah. So I mean So even coming back to the name of the business, sometimes I wonder whether Wine Giro now will be limiting. I, I, I hope it becomes a brand that oh that outlasts the wine parts yeah. per se, right? Can still because do more. because now it's about experiences, you know. So you could add food, you could add mm. cigars, other spirits. Mm. Mm. The sommelier experience is beyond just wine. Mm. You know, the, the the experience you want to give someone in an establishment is beyond sometimes food and drink. It's other things. And because uh, still we we're, we're still in that uh, topic, what do you think? you've noticed like it's the hardest part for people to grasp what do you think is the hardest uh, part of the course where you think like okay this is where I've noticed like people are having a problem even though they're open to studying mm. it it's kind of like a bit tricky okay well the cost the cost um, mm -hmm. if you think about I have I have this amount of money and I have these choices of how to spend it. Yeah. Would W set be what I'm thinking about first? Not necessarily. Yeah. But I think it's an investment that people should make, especially if they want to grow. Um, I'm looking forward to the time when to get a job anywhere, yeah. you have to have it as a base. Yeah. Or you'll be compelled to do it. You have to so do it. To work in an accounting firm, you have to be a CPA. Yeah. Okay, right? Mm -hmm. Or even if you're still doing your still studying, yeah. you're given sort of a time frame by when you should have qualified yeah. to keep the job. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to a time when, you know, so legitimizing this space of sommeliers. Um, I think that, so, so, so the cost is a challenge that way. But one way we want to help people is um, from the two competitions for the sommelier competition we've had, mm -hmm. there's been different groups formed that want to do much more to promote their own education within their own you know, as industry players, mm -hmm. right? So whether you can have different formal things where you share knowledge and do things and also then get access to other competitions and link with other people abroad. Um, so, for example, the current winner, Sam Disho, who works for Uva Wines, um, and a previous participant, Kelvin, are in the process of setting that up together. Mm. So people who want to be part of an association that trains them, and, and then maybe you can develop different products where the end is that the W set is the big thing, yeah. right? Yeah. But then you'll be able to do your own tastings as a group. You bring a bottle, you bring a bottle, you bring a bottle. So we are sharing costs because mm. this homework money is a lot, like uh, I said. It's a lot, it's a lot. <laughs> and, and speaking even yes. of which, when you're saying, when you're doing this training and, ev and yes. everything, have you, which brands have you partnered with to provide like the... Okay, so we work with all. Oh, how is how, how does that go? Is there specific brands that you have to work with when you're doing the training? Cause okay. they're the ones endorsing it, so or you're just open to. Okay, so the so when we're doing the wines of South Africa course, clearly then we can ah. only deal with South African wine importers. Yeah, 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 yeah. because that's very specific. For W set, the curriculum is worldwide. I mean, mm. is um, there's no. Limit, limit to any country limit. or any brand. Yeah. So actually, a lot of importers have been supporting us that way. Yeah, because yeah. that's what. So I was the asking. two main partners of the company, like I said, Defries Consulting, they they import Fierkelaken from South Africa. They also. Well, you say that. Fierkelaken. <laughs> and <laughs> even now, can you even imagine me trying to write that down? Now when I'm doing this post and I'm talking about that, you have to <laughs> to write down the pronoun. The, the perfect, yeah, yeah. The pronunciation, yeah, yeah. For me, the spelling, I have to, yeah. You have to, no problem. Yeah, uh-huh. In fact, some people call it Vigele Gele. 
Um, they also import Nicolas Feuillet's champagne. Oh, well, that's a good yeah. one, though, right? So, for example, that's a good one. Yeah. So, and then we have Makin, who imports Celestial Bay wines from Australia, mm. for example. So, of course, this um, I mean, the, 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 this is an opportunity for them to, of course, ingrain their brand. So that's the first part of call. Mm. Then we have the curriculum outlines what wines you should serve for what part of the course. Mm. So then we actually reach out to importers and say, we're doing level two on these dates. We require, say, Riesling from, uh, from Australia. Yeah. We require Malbec from Argentina. We require Prosecco from Italy. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, we crowdsource, if you can say that. Yeah. And uh, in some cases, we have to purchase. So in essence, there's, there's a whole lot of involvement around that. Of course, we have to lobby and lobby a lot more. Mm -hmm. uh, this year has been tough. For importers, with the change of uh, uh, the processes earlier in the year, so there's a course we actually uh, did with, you know, it was a very interesting crowdsourcing experiment for the, one of the last courses we did. Yeah. But we work with everybody. Mm -hmm. The course is generic. So How, what, what affected, you say the, the, so the importing was, process? The importing process had been changed, so a lot, there was a lot of stockouts, for example. Oh. So usually we always have an abundance of choice, but Taxes? in that particular, I know it was a testing process. So, to get the cab stickers and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And then there was also some issues at the port and, and all that stuff. But yes, so we, 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 we have to continue working with them, with the importers. With the, yeah, with the yeah. importers. It's an ecosystem. You can't do one without the other. It's definitely, you have to. Okay, for the, for the W set, I know we've talked about South Africa since you're talking about uh, working with different, like, you know, wine suppliers and different... Mm -hmm wine companies, right? And the training part, uh, I see you moving in and out of the country at times, right? My, myself, yes. Yeah, yes, yes. yourself, yeah. Do you go to all those different countries or just specifically South Africa to gain, like, a, like maybe there's a new introduction they're introducing to okay. a W set course? Okay. Is something new they want to implement or add in that course? Okay, no, no, no. Well, yeah. when I traveled for W set, like I indicated, it yeah. was to actually go and do when, when I was doing my education. So yeah. when I was furthering my own education, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. But of course, we're in constant communication with them. Yeah. And they are coming for the first time to Kenya next year as an organization oh, to, yeah. to do, yeah. you know, in essence, to help us with what, yeah. we've, what we've already started. Mm -hmm. uh, the contract with the wines of South Africa, of course, there is trips that are mandatory to go and of course you know get involved in events mm -hmm. the Somalia Cup was one of them mm -hmm. so of course I accompanied Sam to South Africa to be part of that yeah. and to see him compete against the others from the world right? yeah. um, the Cape Wine Show mm -hmm. again is part of the work you have to go and uh, you know network and build relationships mm -hmm. um, I haven't quite traveled to Europe yeah, because we're talking about France a lot, wine, Italy. Yes, yeah, yeah wine that's excursions. what I'm asking. Yeah, I do hope to attend Provine, which is the largest sort of wine show mm. that's held in which Germany. Is the, which, which is the one that we're shooting? That's that's. <laughs> No, no, no. We're going to be shooting for two years. That's for oh. our channel. Okay. And there'll be, okay. there'll be very many okay. different products there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We can do a country series. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Wait for it, guys. Wait for that one. <laughs> oh, yeah. We can mm -hmm. even attend all the big wine shows around the world. That's, and, you know, that's what I was... Uh, yeah. that's w that was my inquiry. There that was go. my inquiry. You know, and then the now... The world is our oyster. So, yeah. of course, the travel... I would want to travel a lot more. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the because we're talking about we travel, different we wines coming from different from places, different countries, yeah. yeah, and I'm sure there's also a way. Yes, I wish our importers could take us along their trips as well because they are the ones who go a lot to their um, specific countries. Oh, true. I know, I know Viva Global, I mean, you, yeah. you shot their big expo, and, yeah. he, and, and, and think about that event. One importer has a big enough insane. portfolio to run their own. It to run their own show. What did you think of that? I event? loved it, and you covered it really well. But then again, Thank the the fact that they insisted that we had to have W set classes that was nice. during the event as well, I think it's something that should be added to every sort of big tasting oh, event. That's as well. what you were saying, yeah. Yes. If you include that as a package, yes, or an option, at least give people an, give that people as that an option. Value. Like yo, you can actually, exactly. apart from attending, you can also yes. live with some. Yes, live with something. Knowledge. Yeah, you, yeah. you do the tasting, yes, but live with some knowledge. And mm. then you understand about the business models. Mm. So like Viva, for example, Mira knows I, I want to go to New Zealand. Yeah. <laughs> Wink. 
Wink. Yeah. <laughs> Mira, that's you know, a message for you. brands like Cloudy Bay, yeah. uh, Matua, you know, yeah. from New Zealand. Um, mm. There are brands from Australia like Cape Mentel, mm. um, you know, uh, Penfolds. Yeah. They had wines from the States like, um, oh, I forget the, the name. The wines that were there. There was South African wines. You see, but then, wa- so there was a Nairobi Wine Festival that was many importers in the same room together. We mm-hmm. have the Wasa show that is South African wine importers in the same room, mm-hmm. which is a regional show. Mm-hmm. They did their own you yeah. know, portfolio show yeah. from the importer themselves, and they were able to fill the room with lots of people. Oh. Yeah, so that there's yeah. so much to do. There is so, so much to do. Um, mm-hmm. And so many products. We could have just premium wine show. We could have... I mean, it's amazing. Champagne show. Champagne show. <laughs> Fortified wine show. <laughs> so There's so much to talk about. <laughs> since we're also talking about all these things, somebody would be like, you know what? They hear the way you are passionate yeah. about what you're doing. And of course, I'm assuming you also have... Do you have a team? Yes, I have a team. A, a very small team. Yeah. And, and the somebody, team is very project focused. Yeah, and people... <laughs> yeah, wait, wait, wait to see where I, I'm I, going with this. Are we a team? Yes. Are we a team? Yeah. <laughs> yes, we are. So if somebody is like really interested and now they're not even looking, because we're talking about like building this up in yeah. Kenya as well, right? Mm-hmm. And somebody's like, okay, I'd want to do this course, this course, and I know if I'm good at this, if maybe eventually I would want to partner and start to just, you know, join her team. Mm-hmm. Is that something that you're looking for to like, you know, recruiting more people and building like a whole we big have, empire? We have, we have a long-term vision, right? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And at some point the vision was, you know, we'll own the whole production line and have our own wine brand, whatever. Yeah. It keeps changing and evolving. Um, yeah. And of course we have to... We have to look for the opportunities. Sometimes they come to us. Sometimes we force them, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, actually, uh-huh. lately, uh, what I've actually been getting, okay, so if the opportunity to grow the team, you can contact us. And, of course, we'll follow the process. Yeah. yeah. That's the script. Yeah. We follow the process as required. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, at Winejiro is my handle on Instagram, on Facebook as well. So, you can contact me there. I'll but tag you on the podcast. Yeah. So they'll definitely... They but then the the... I be, we've been getting a lot of requests now, so maybe recruitment is another area. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so importers come and say, I want someone. So, of course, one pool we have is the Somalia Cup people, mm-hmm. the other pool we have is the WSET people. Yeah, and if we can link them to new jobs, it Why would be not? great. Yeah, two people I know who are working in the trade space in Kenya have gone to work on cruise ships. I learned this year. Two of our participants from the Somalia Cup. That's One nice is Silas man. used to be at Kepinski and Moses used to be with the Tamarind Group. People are going to cruise ships. That's an opportunity as well. Yeah. So yeah. again, maybe recruitment is another thing because mm. I guess training and links with the industry. Yeah, you can actually just well. link them too yeah. as so, you grow yeah. as well. So if you're not working for Wine Jerum, you can. I mean, she can link you to somewhere else. That's, yeah, nice. that's, that's so the you other hear opportunity that, guys? as well. Are more opportunities out yeah. there. Because sometimes you, I mean, we. It's a small space. Sometimes you go around the same people, yeah. and it's great to get new people to build the space. Yeah. But the other thing is. Um, I'm so proud that a lot of the wine companies, if I can call them that, whether it's importers or retailers, are women-owned. There's a lot of that. It's amazing. Like, women rule the wine space in Nairobi. Yeah. Um, if you think about Suraya, the wine shop. That's you think about oh, that's actually casks, true. Casks that's and Barrels, true. Washera. You think about Josephine from... And they're doing it very well. Very well. Josephine from uh, Uwe, who am I forgetting names now? Veram. <laughs> you started um, bringing up the you names. You know, so Diane from Under the Influence. Um, yeah. There yeah. is, uh, oh, I have to shout out to all of them now. Ooh. If you forget someone, you know, they'll be Sorry, like, well. she actually didn't mention. Kalika me. from Mia. Yeah. You know, there's uh, Madvi in Slater and Whitaker. There's, mm. there's a lot of wine I mean, there's a lot of women, and it's not old women. Again, it's, you know, yeah. relatively young women. I yeah. made a career change at 35 plus. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it's not like and that's it's like easy. A, yeah, it's a huge shift. It's a I huge shift. Imagine, yeah. It's something totally new. But it's I guess new. my circumstances of once you've lost the most important thing in your life, perhaps then your view of what is important in Everything life is different. Yeah. But I'm saying it's possible. Yeah. I have people who come to class. There's an inquiry I got the other day. Someone is saying, well, I work in a spare parts shop for cars. Wow. But this is what I want to do. And I'm like, That's come a completely in. different field. Come and, yeah. Interior designer, whatever you are, really, come yeah. in. Give you, I mean, if you're interested and have the passion, try it out and see where, where it takes you. Like anything. Really. 
I would just like Even to learn you. it so that, you know, when I'm having these conversations, I don't just, because I zone out once people start talking about one. You know, this, this, this. When you like, get too oh, technical. Lord. Yeah, once you start getting too technical, I'll be like, okay, I don't have time for this. The one thing I keep telling I mean, you. Let me go to my Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> you have to bring it down. And it's a challenge. Yeah. Being able to speak to the Danish dinner you are part of. Yep. It was an expatriate community. You need to be able to explain to those. Yeah. Who yeah. have been to the places you haven't been? True. Yeah, when you told them Bordeaux, they're like, "Oh yeah, I was there last summer." Yeah. Or I own a house there, right? Yeah, yeah. The same way you should be yeah. able to explain to my cousin in Shags. Yeah, that's who's, true. Who's a casual debara yeah. in a tea farm? And make them still have the same understanding. Yeah. 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 Mm. So of course the language has to be very different. True. When I'm talking about pairing, I always challenge people and say, honestly speaking, what I eat at home is chapati and dengu. Yeah. Pilau. Mm. Marigo, you know, mm. sorry, uh, mm. matoke, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and things like that, yeah? So mm -hmm. you can't be giving me the whole oysters and champagne story. Yeah. yeah. You have to give me for your matoke, for your matumbo. It's not practical, because you know, that's, yeah. Yes, you have to bring it down to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah? I know nyamachoma is a big thing, that's easy, yeah. but then even the other things. If I'm down at the coast and I'm having pueza from yeah. the Kibanda, Hapo Diani, yeah. my favorite place, yeah. you know? What should, Where? Find, should I Diani? be happy? Yeah? Indiani? Indiani. Indiani mm -hmm. is my favorite place. Wow. Yeah. No, but I do love Even Diani when we live well. in France, yeah. we'll be coming. Of course, we'll be for doing sure. monthly trips to Diani. Yeah, because we have to, you know, at least, you know, but the flights have to. You know, <laughs> if there's, there was a way they, the flights just go straight to Diani, that would be nice. Well, to Mombasa they do. International flights to Mombasa, you can. Wait, what? Straight from? You can connect, like... With different oh yeah, yeah, because you. Oh yeah, like Qatar, oh yeah, oh yeah, I mean, Qatar, okay, yeah, yeah. Get via what Doha, you're right? But oh, yeah. there's flights from Mombasa. So we'll start planning those trips. Don't worry, <laughs> don't worry. <Yeah. laughs> it's oh, it's 2020. Anything is possible, right? <laughs> yeah. So vision 2020. Um, We've been waiting for 2030. What? Um, one thing that I've noticed, <coughs> like, uh, uh, it's okay. Sorry, Excuse my apologies. Excuse me. Some more. Yeah, I'll have a sip. Oh, okay. So, um, in the how how are you guys using social media? Is it important for like just the wine industry in general? It's I haven't seen like wine people really push uh, or use really? social media to its fullest potential. Okay, so how would you like? Sorry, maybe. No, no, no. I'm not saying I would like. Would I'm you, not. I'm just saying. What would you say? Okay, who? Okay, what industry uses it to its full potential? Perhaps I should ask you. Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, but I'm just saying. No, no, no. In general. No, no. Okay. Uh, There's definitely a lot to be learned. Yeah. There's definitely yeah. a lot to be learned. I mean. Because I um, think when people miss out or don't maybe realize, like, oh, this actually exists in Kenya. It's maybe because uh, you haven't like shouted the presence of it. Like it's, maybe I'm seeing my own things. No, I can. No, if you look for uh, it, yeah. if, if you decide I want to drive a Mercedes, see so suddenly every I listen. car you'll be looking yeah. at no, with that's your true. Spins, right? That's true. The, the, the GL. True. The G wagon. Sorry. Uh, true. True. <laughs> but what are your thoughts on social media? Are you are you guys okay, so as a, tapping into it? I know for I know for our interactions with wines of South Africa, with yeah. um, the WC through the Hospitality Competence Center. Yeah. Social media is a big thing for us. Oh yeah, yeah. So I mean, we it it's, it it's, it could be part of the marketing process. So mm. of course, you then you know make your noise there. You post when you have yeah. your classes, and actually, it has it's, it's a lead generation for us. Yeah, yeah. A, lot, a lot of the lead generation the, comes the, from the there. reason why I brought it up is because like nowadays, even if you go like just on, even if it's Instagram, yeah. Facebook, when somebody's having a meal and they have their a glass of wine yes. there, they just they yeah. do take that it's picture. Very, it's very, very important. Dominant it's in that, like, you know. It's very important. Personally, yeah. there's a lot of wine accounts I follow. Both yeah. individuals in the space and yeah. also producers and yeah. brands, right? Yeah. So even for my own knowledge, I rely a lot on social media mm. um, as much as... And, then, and it really sort of shortens everything. I mean, I have not, I've never been to an actual harvest. Yeah. But then, like when Melissa was, for example, at Vihelehen and she was posting a harvesting yeah, process, yeah, yes. Yeah. Leleshua have also been posting the harvesting ah. process. I felt like I understand now. I feel like you're actually there that now. Thing. You, so, mm -hmm. huge draw. Yeah. Totally huge draw. Um, definitely more can be done. Mm -hmm. The one thing that, again, is a consideration for marketing of companies like ours yeah. 
is the age. Mm -hmm. So, for example, my niece is 17. She's on Instagram. She wanted yeah. to follow me. Yeah. My account is not a personal account. I, I do put some personal information, but it's mainly a business account. And I was like, you cannot join. <laughs> but I can't restrict her. Like, yeah. I don't have filters yeah. to... Yeah. And I don't know what the law is. I know a lot more people now are putting the age restrictions on their posts anyway. True. But how do you control it? Um, websites for wine companies ask you to put on your age. But again, yeah, actually true. Anything to do with alcohol, you have yeah, to. It's, yeah, it's a sort of, uh, what is it called, gate, but, mm -hmm. you know, can you really control it? So definitely, social media is a big part. But you cannot rely on social media alone. People have to experience. When I talked about my company at the beginning, when you stopped me. <laughs> oh, my apologies. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah. Yeah, when Did I was you finish talking about it? We didn't even get back to it. Oh, but Lord. Then, not to well, worry. Yeah. The education, experience, lifestyle is sort of, a, what can I say, it's a continuum. Mm -hmm. Of course, it come, you can come back and forth. Yeah. But the thing is, is to, you need to have some knowledge to enhance your experience. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the experience itself is the education. You, you acquire education through the experience, mm -hmm. but we feel having education and experiencing something enhances it more. Yeah, to true. such a to such an extent that you can become like I was in South Africa, mm -hmm. where it's a lifestyle. You go to the supermarket and you just know what wine to buy, without thinking. Like yeah, you already know it, what it, you're so, going for and you. why you're going for this. You have you have wine with you know with your food every day. Mm -hmm. You have a home cellar where you have curated different wines. You know, John Akikuja to Tampatia he mother-in-law in the wine yake. You know, when, when we're I'm cooking this, event, when we're cooking this, this, we'll go with this. Your house knows about it. Yeah. Everybody knows about it. We know how to store correctly, use the correct glassware. It's becoming, it's part of us. Mm -hmm. When, you know, we we talk about wine like we talk about things we're interested in. You know, sure. I, I cycle. So, in fact, the bikes I'm seeing in front. You cycle visiting. as well? I cycle as well. Okay. Yeah. You have to, ha lifestyle things, you know. You have, to be, you have to be all round. So, no crazy ideas have come while I'm cycling. <laughs> <laughs> like I did while Not yet, not yet. <laughs> not yet. But mm -hmm. um, the idea is the things around you. And I laugh because I was at a hike two weeks ago. Yeah. And it rained the whole weekend. It was so terrible. And it was the kind of experience where I wanted to lock myself from the business and not think about it and yeah. just chill in the outdoors. Just enjoy. And we're, and we're a very small group of 10 people. But I've got two sign-ups from class from that group of 10 people. Uh -huh. And I wasn't even doing a pitch or anything. Mm. Someone just mentioned, because they know what I do, you didn't bring any wine for us. I'm like, we're hiking, we're not supposed to be drinking. Yeah. And of course, then I got to talk about what I do. Yeah. So it's like, sometimes even in the non- marketing activities you're you doing yeah and then kind of you still get your business because mm. people are interested and again it's it's an authentic pitch yeah and now do you want to finish up about your company because i interrupted you sorry no i Cause think because we are almost winding up huh? <laughs> yeah okay. so really like i when you and, uh, and i do want people to actually understand because we've you see you've yes. talked about so much because i didn't want us to just talk about like just you know pointers and they people don't understand how you came into okay, but now they understand Wenjiru, they understand the personality they understand how you stumbled into this yeah and how everything's just falling into place and thank you this has been great um, you like the podcast i do like when the was podcast. the last time you did an interview like this i've never done a podcast it's my first podcast the last what? interview i did was actually on over the phone of course with a list of specific questions yeah yeah but yeah this has been amazing that's what i'm saying we, hey, we need to investigate see, this hey, channel listen listen this channel thing yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. so i think for me five years on in this business is really appreciating that um there's an ecosystem in the food and drinks business yeah um where we see our role is Specifically right now, we are mostly playing in the business-to-business -business space. Mm -hmm. That's on the education side and, of course, doing the trade shows. And, um, you know, uh, maybe the, the whole thing about the, the business of food and wine interactions we're having. Mm -hmm. But, of course, the consumer side is also a really big part of what we do. Mm -hmm. So, in a nutshell, of course, Wine Giro has key clients. And I guess that's how our products are defined right now. So we have the W set, which we're in partnership with uh, the Hospitality Competence Center. Like I said, we do courses every month. You can uh, register online uh, on www.hcc-ea.com. 
and also mm-hmm. they'll be tagged onto this as well. That's for the Wines and Spirits Education Trust courses, WSET Level 1 and 2. Yeah. You can join either Level 1 or 2. You don't need any requirements or prior experience. You, you pay, you come to class, we take it from there. And mm. it's a global qualification that can take you to different places. Winejiro does consulting for different organizations. One of them is Wines of South Africa. We are their Kenyan agent. For WOSA, we do their trade shows, which are held annually. We facilitate uh, business-to-business linkages between importers and uh, producers. So if you're an aspiring importer who wants to get into the business and you don't know what brands to look for, we can assist with that. And, you know, we also do, um, you know, we talk about South African brands in a big space. We also organize the trainings for the WOSA that are held once a year. And whenever there's a winemaker, which is some of the events that are happening regularly, then we facilitate that aspect as well. Um, if people want to go down to South Africa, we can also you know, facilitate that for you as well. And pe- different groups have gone and enjoyed different experiences. Um, we also do customized events. You want uh, us to provide wine for your wedding and you don't know what wine to have for your wedding, we will curate that for you. If you're having, um, you want a wine experience at home for you and your friends, um, mm. hit us up, we can curate. Yeah. That's what though. Curate, yeah. <laughs> we will no, curate or that, that's a perfect place to yes, use it. We will curate actually. that for you. Uh-huh. Um, and I'm also exploring any, anything wine related. I'm always open to talk. I'm very passionate about legacy. So developing the Somalia Association for Kenya and getting Kenyan sommeliers abroad, giving them opportunities in other countries. And even for those in school already, I mean, I pop into. International Hospitality and Tourism Institute often. We've mm. done some work with the uh, Utali, even sponsoring the best beverage students because we have to pick them up from early. Yeah. Um, if I start learning about wine at 20 and not at 30 plus 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 that I started <laughs> learning about, then clearly that whole lifestyle thing yeah. is appreciated. And I have even funded people who, of course, wanted to do the course mm. and have shown promise as well through, mm. um, through that. So we're here for the long haul. Uh, we are excited about the opportunities being presented with the new wine brands, with new hotel brands, with all these creative uh, destination experiences that have been created here. Mm. Uh, we are passionate about what we do, and I hope it shows. <laughs> no, it does show, because I actually don't think you rest. Do you even rest? <laughs> I'm always seeing you doing something somewhere. When I'm cycling always. or oh, running. Always. cycling or running. <laughs> That's your case case. Or lying by the beach too, right? Oh, yeah. Every so yeah. often. Yeah. I mean, you you need you need that to reboot, of course, and to come reboot. back with like new ideas, fresh ideas. No, to always, drive. always. Yeah. So, what's the plan for this year? Tw- this year being 2020. 2020. No, we continue with the same. I mean, yeah. we we are we are excited to revamp our numbers on the W set course. We're excited about the visit of you know the headquarter guys that are coming in March. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Somalia Association definitely needs to get that running, and if we can get. Um, representatives from Kenya to attend the international association something it's in French mm. <laughs> convention right yeah uh, that's something really great I hope to visit one of the big wine shows next year mm. but yeah we continue with the grind and spread the word and beat the nation one person at a time yeah nice. this is a nation nice. building <laughs> nice. so <laughs> yeah so if I, if I may go back my yeah. civil servant days were about sustainable livelihoods it's the same here is impact it? it's the oh same. yeah Im- oh yeah yeah it's, it's more same. or less the same the medium is just different oh, but yeah. it's more or less around that whole building true. the nation too true yeah. so now since we're coming to the end of the podcast uh just tell people where they can find more information if it's website Instagram handles, all those things. Okay. And, you know, any parting shot that you'd like to give guys. Because there are so many wine lovers, like in Kenya, but yeah. they really, some still, like you've said, if you catch them early enough, yes. like these people can just, they have the potential to be like amazing and just grow into and just some. Just grow and yeah. do. Just yeah. go do, do it. Crazy, really, just go crazy do crazy things. It. Mm-hmm. Or is it fake it till you make it? <laughs> fake it till <laughs> you make it. Um, yeah. So I mentioned at Winejiro as our handles before mm-hmm. um, and the HCC hyphen EA mm-hmm. at WZ Global is the Wines and Spirits Education Trust handle mm-hmm. at WASA underscore ZA is the Wines of South Africa handle as well. And uh, yeah, let's talk and uh, take this to the next level. Then we can have a. When, are we, when we launch our channel, we'll come back and talk about what has happened between now 
And then. And then. Yes. But then we will be in France, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm sipping just some sparkling wine, perhaps. Yes, we'll be in champagne. Oh, yeah. Happening. Oh, yeah. It has to be that. <laughs> it has to be that. So, ladies and gents, you know, that has been another amazing, amazing episode of the Kiss Capades podcast. Thank you so much for coming Thank through. You. Thank you. So I respect much. what you're doing and just keep up with the grind. So, guys, you know the usual. <laughs> Subscribe to the YouTube channel, uh, Apple iTunes, Castbox. Follow us on Instagram, uh, Facebook, all the social media platforms. We post every single day. We post 20 videos across our social platforms every single day. You can watch the full videos. You can listen to the audios. Thanks for listening. Thanks for supporting us. It's the Kiss Capades podcast. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, that was a lot.